OSHA's first aid and medical standard consists of just three short paragraphs, which usually leaves employers with more questions than answers. Ultimately, how employers must comply with the standard depends on how close they are to a medical facility that can provide treatment, as well as the types of hazards present. When an accident can result in suffocation, severe bleeding, or a life-threatening or permanently disabling injury or illness, OSHA expects a three to four minute response time from the time of injury to the time of administering first aid. If such a life-threatening or serious injury is unlikely, OSHA allows a longer response time, such as 15 minutes. When outside professionals can't respond within the required response time for the expected types of injuries, the employer must train one or more persons to render first aid. Training should cover the types of injuries and illnesses that are likely to occur. Employees who are expected to provide first aid or medical services must be trained in OSHA's Bloodborne Pathogen Standard. First aid supplies must be readily available. Employers are responsible for evaluating the hazards in the workplace and determining what supplies are appropriate. OSHA requires employers to consult with medical personnel on matters of plant health. These professionals who treat injured employees can also assist in deciding the contents and quantity of the facility's first aid kits. If workers may be exposed to corrosive materials, suitable facilities for quick drenching or flushing of the eyes or body must be available within the work area. These facilities must be installed, designed, and positioned so they won't pose a safety hazard to users. And finally, all employees need to know how to report a medical emergency. However, only those trained in first aid should provide basic care to an injured or ill employee.